Mm-hmm. I bet. It lives, I see. Do you want to speak with Lolita? I'm sorry, but Gabriel is allowed. Oh, I mean, he's out. Yeah, if he ever comes back, I'll tell him. You know, you could do better. I know I don't know you, but you could do better. Good morning. The phone's been ringing off the hook all morning. Let me know when you want your messages. Yeah. Gee, you're lively. Did you have another nightmare last night? Sort of. Mm-hmm. I told you it's that voodoo book you're researching. That stuff can seriously screw up your karma. I'm sure that's it. Maybe I should write a horror novel on passive resistance instead. <sighs> so don't sleep. It's your body. Anyway, your handheld tape recorder came today. Really? Great! I can't wait to see what human rights you violate with this one. I can't wait to violate them. For example, if you would just let me... And... I located some local voodoo references for you. Dixieland Drugstore and the Historical Museum of Voodoo. Both are right here in French Quarter. How would I ever manage without you? You? Give me a break. The devil himself couldn't change you. Well, if the devil had great legs, perhaps. Like yours. And a riveting personality, I'm sure. Well, if you need any more research done, just ask. It's not as though we're swamped with customers. Today's newspaper is on the counter. The books on the table have been chosen for their special appeal. Recent fiction by the biggies. An cute gargoyle, eh? Three snakes in a skull. Gabriel's father painted it. What a wacky, offbeat kind of guy Daddy was. The top shelf contained books on animals including snakes and other reptiles. The top shelf contains a set of German books that once belonged to Gabriel's grandfather. That shelf holds used copies of the Dime Strife series, secrets of unsolved ancient UFO mysteries and such. They just leap out the door. Blessed caffeine. The coffee pot would get cold and... My kidney's already floating. My The magnifying glass is a handy item for reading old manuscripts or the fine print on Gabriel's lease. The magnifying... There's a pair of tweezers on the counter. Grace uses them for book repair work. Gabriel could move the tweezers round on it. There is not... Mind if I borrow the magnifying glass? No, Sherlock. Just bring it back when we get the next estate shipment. No problem. I'm gonna take the tweezers for a bit. Good. You're beginning to look a little scruffy. Just trying to make you feel at home. Grace keeps her art supplies here. Gabriel looks at the cash register, checking for cobweb. Gabriel opens the cash register to examine the take. Or, in the case of St. George Books, the mistake. It's a gift certificate left over from yet another dismal failure of a promotion. The cash register contains about $20 in small bills and chain. Slim pickings. 
I trust you can live without this old gift certificate. Knock yourself out. So, what's new, Grace? Your use of mathematics, for one thing. These books are unbelievable. What can I say? I refuse to be bound by rules. The strap marks on your bedpost speak otherwise. Don't mind if I do. Do what? Oh, nothing. Did I ever tell you that you're actually quite attractive? Be still, my heart. Had any customers lately? Uh, no. But I'm sure you have. You know, you really should get out more. But then who'd take care of St. George's? Or me. Exactly. Oh, done anything interesting lately? By your definition? No. I prefer it that way. Keeping busy? Not really. If you need any research done, let me know. The ladder provides access to the uppermost shelves of the bookcase. Gabriel can that Gabriel can Gabriel If you try to look down my shirt one more time, I'm leaving. Hell, just trying to refresh my memory. I know what you're trying to refresh, and it isn't your memory. Get down. Gabriel pulls down a book on snakes. Snakes are legless reptiles. Some snakes kill their prey with poison, some by constriction. A snake smells by tasting the air with its forked tongue. The smells are passed back to a sense organ in the mouth. Constrictor snakes, however, sense their prey by vibration. Hmm. Did you know that medieval legends about dragons and giant worms are actually based on snakes? You know, dragons, devils, sea monsters, well, they've always been associated with snakes. Grace, get alive. Gabriel... Snakes are a snake smith. Gabriel selects a volume of German poetry that he always found strangely compelling. Drei Drachen. Drei Drachen kriechen in meinen Schlaf. Die Seele wollen sie lebendig zum Fraß. Feurigen Atems, gespeltener Zunge. Genießen Sie jedes Mal. That's nice. Kind of creepy, though. Who's the author? Heinz Ritter. I'm not sure what it says, but I get the feeling the guy was one sick puppy. Gabriel's had all those books in the bathroom and doesn't care to read them again. Times Picohune, dated June 18, 1993. The front page has an article about the voodoo murders. The article says that the victims are all identified as members of the underworld. The general public of New Orleans is in no danger. Police claim the so-called voodoo trappings found at the crime scenes are fake, a scare tactic, and that the murders are not associated with any genuine practitioners. Gabriel also scans the Aquarius horoscope for the day. Potential storms ahead. Proceed with caution and do not get involved with anything new at this time. Mm -hmm. Right. The desk. Gabriel cannot see a way. There is no...
The desk phone is cheap but functional. Jeans and t-shirts. All my clothes look the same, so why change them? A poster on the wall advertises Mardi Gras, the biggest party of the year in New Orleans. Gabriel likes a subdued lighting effect in his studio. It's Gabriel's bed, unmade as usual. It's no use. I can't sleep. I don't think putting on a Mardi Gras mask right now would help. That does Mardi Gras mementos left by some female or other. Mardi Gras. The wastebasket overflows with crumpled pages of mediocre glory. A little cold bubbly and brie cheese is about all Gabriel's fridge ever has in it. The ref Mmm, good coffee. My kidney's already floating, thanks. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? What can you tell me about voodoo? I didn't know much of anything about it, until you started researching it for your book. Now I know that it's active in the city. There's that shop, a museum. It can clearly be dangerous in the wrong hands. You should be careful investigating it. Do you know anything else about voodoo? I've told you all I know. Sorry, I can't be more help. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Just what I read in the paper, same as you. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Well, I've only been here two months, but I love it. It's so much more alive than any place I've been. It feels like anything's possible here. What else can you tell me? You're the native. Don't ask me. Tell me about yourself, Grace. You're yeah, right, Knight. I mean it. What do you want to know? How come we haven't gone out yet? I'm still waiting around for that lobotomy. As soon as I get it, I'll let you know. How do you like working at St. George's Books? Well, it's not exactly a huge intellectual challenge. Although the math in your record books could confuse Einstein. Still, I love old books, and it's a nice way to pay the bills while I explore the city for a summer. If you ever pay me, that is. What do you do after work? Well, I either go to my oil painting class or my Tai Chi. You know that. You know, you can go overboard with this improving yourself stuff. You don't want to alienate us mere mortals. I suppose I should just allow my mind and body to atrophy. Works for me. How old are you? Old enough to know about men like you. Just tell me anything at all. I just got my master's in history and classics. My folks wanted me to go on right away for my PhD, but... Eighteen years of school was enough. I needed a break. Nothing, I guess. Never mind. Sit yourself. Do you have messages for me? Dana called. And uh, Susie left a message about a lawsuit. Toss him. Okie dokie. There's more when you want them. Do you have more messages for me? Your grandmother called. I keep meaning to get over there. What did she say? Did she sound good? She sounded great, and we had a nice little chat about you. Grace! Don't worry. I didn't go into detail about your cardinal sins. Not that anything about you could surprise her. She adores you anyway. She's my girl. 
But she said to remind you to stop by and go through your father's things. Hmm. Okay. Do you have more messages for me? Here's a strange one. You got a call from someone named Wolfgang Ritter? He said he was calling from Germany. He told me it was urgent, maybe you should give him a call. Call Germany? Like hell. If it's really important, he'll call back. Well, fine. Let's just hope he's not with the German lottery for pitiful American authors. Do you have more messages for me? Your friend Detective Mosley called. Talking of visiting. Especially with you. What do you want? He left an interesting message. He told me to tell you that his mother's maiden name is Humphrey. Oh, that's H-U-M-P-H-R-E-Y. Fascinating. And that he left some photos for you at the station. At the front desk. It's about time. Gabriel. Those photos wouldn't have anything to do with the voodoo murders, would they? Now, why would you say something like that? Because I know you. You're getting privileged information, aren't you? Did you tell him you'd put him in your new voodoo book? A writer has certain obligation to his readers, you know. Gabriel, you know you never put him in your book. Your main character is a female orthodontist. You're gonna be reincarnated as a pit bull if you keep screwing with your karma. As long as it's a male pit bull with a really big... That's enough. Thanks. Anyway, that's all the messages. Thank God. The $20 gift certificate for St. George's looks pitifully new. The magnifying glass is an expensive one with an inlaid jade handle and air the tweezers from the bookshop. I'll be back later. Uh-huh. I'm so glad you stopped by. Sorry it's been a while, Grandma. Not at all. Give us a kiss. Now come and sit down. Tell me how you're doing. How you been, Gran? Just fine, dear. I'm sorry I bothered you at work. But I was hoping you'd get a chance to go through your father's things in the attic. Don't be silly. You can call me anytime. Granny might get worried if Gabriel started rambling to thin air. Gra That's my gran. Adorable, as always. You're such a tease. Hey, that's my gran. Show some respect. Hey, Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? What can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? What an odd question, Gabriel. Of course, you always were interested in monster movies and all that other weird stuff. You get that from your father and granddad anything about it, dear. Of course, it was very big in New Orleans at one time, but you don't hear about it so much these days. Too much else in the world to worry about, I guess. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Oh, Gabriel, nothing. And I don't want to. I sometimes wonder what this world is coming to. What can you tell me about New Orleans? New Orleans is very southern. Of course, though, not as much as it used to be when I was a girl. It's gotten much more influenced by the East Coast and that California stuff. Still, it hasn't changed as much as other places, I reckon. We've always been happy here. What 
can you tell me about now? My goodness, boy. You've lived here all your life just like me. I can't tell you much that you don't already know. Tell me about... Me? Oh, surely you have something more interesting to talk about. Oh, come on, Graham. All right, dear. What do you want to hear? What do you do all day? You know how I love to knit and work in my garden? I also take long walks. It's the only way to keep an old body like mine from stiffening up. You're not old. Oh, don't be foolish. I'm older than the hills. Tell me about before you met Granddaddy. Well, you know I was born Rebecca Wright. My daddy owned a lot of land outside of town. We grew peas, corn, cotton, all kinds of things. It was a good childhood, but my father was very strict. He didn't much let me out of his sight. Tell me how... I met Harrison at a church revival. There was a traveling preacher back then, a big fella named Reverend Jim. I even remember his slogan, Come to me to find your way. Your granddad was sitting right behind me and my girlfriend Alma, and at one point, old Reverend Jim was flinging his hair around with his fryer and brimstone antics, and a piece of it, one of those small add-on dues for man, went flying off. I swear, Harrison and I were the only ones that noticed. We both started laughing to beat the band. Everyone looked at us like we were a couple of loonies. It was then I knew that he was for me. How you feeling these days? Fit as a fiddle, and don't you worry your head about it. Just tell me anything at all. I had your father when I was 22. The doctors told me I couldn't have any more after him, so I'm afraid I spoiled him rotten. Just... I never loved any man but your grandfather. And I never will. I hate to admit it, but I was a jealous little thing when your granddad and I were younger. I loved him so ferociously. And he did attract the eyes of the ladies, whether he wanted to or not. I get lonely sometimes, but I have lots of girlfriends in the neighborhood. I call one of them if I'm feeling blue. Just tell me. I wish you'd settle down and give me a great grandchild. Oh, grand. I had your fault. Oh, nothing. Never mind. All right, dear. Tell me about our family. Who would you like to hear about? Your granddad, your father? Or your mother. Tell me something about Granddad. Your Granddad immigrated to America when he was 21. He worked his way through school, met and married me, and we had your father, Philip. Tell me something about Granddad. Your Granddad supported me and your father with bookkeeping. I'll tell you what, though. He hated every minute of it. Didn't really like bookkeeping one bit. Maybe that was why he had the worst luck with jobs. The night he'd come home afraid to tell me he'd lost another. <laughs> and I would tell him it didn't matter to me. But he felt ashamed, Gabriel. T Harrison was only 36 when he died. Your father was eight years old at the time. Your granddad was hit by a streetcar in the business district. It took me nearly a year to believe he was really gone. I'm sorry, Gran. I know you are, dear. Tell me... Did you know that your granddad was a poet? He was! He wrote the most beautiful poetry for me when we were courting. I always thought he should have done something with that gift. But he was such a practical man. Didn't believe in chasing after dreams. T I don't know what else... Tell me about my father. Your father was my only child. How we adored him. Philip suffered from terrible nightmares, just like your granddad did. They were two peas in a pod. Tell me... When Philip met your mother, it was love at first sight. They were married two weeks later. 
never looked at a girl seriously until then. And he looked at plenty. You have your father's way with women, Gabriel. And your granddad's. I wanted to just lay down and die when he and your mother were killed in that car crash when you were only eight. It was the thought of taking care of you that kept me going, Gabriel. The police say your father swerved off the road after being frightened by something. Perhaps a deer in the road or a wild cat. Yeah. Your granddad wanted Philip to have a normal life. He was obsessed by that thought. He pushed Philip to go to law school. Philip was driven to art. He painted almost in a daze. He would get so inside himself when he worked. He always hated it that it was Margaret's money that supported the three of you when his painting couldn't. I kept telling him, try something more cheerful, like a landscape or two. But he couldn't do it. His work was just too dark and disturbing for the public, you know. I don't know what... Tell me about my mother. Your mother was Margaret Templeton when your father met her. She came from a very wealthy Creole family in New Orleans. She was beautiful and reckless. She was madly in love with your father, of course. But I also think she liked defying her family. Since you're so interested in family history these days, why don't you go by St. Louis Cemetery Number 1 and visit the family tomb? It would be a sweet gesture. Maybe I will. Your mother's family refused to give her money after the marriage. All she had left was a modest trust fund from her great aunt, who happened to like Philip. The remainder of your mother's trust fund became yours when she died. That's what you used to open your bookshop. The Templetons are all gone now. Every last one of them. They never wanted anything to do with us, of course. What a waste. I don't know what You know, you get prettier every time I see you. Oh, you. <laughs> Have you baked any of your incredible molasses pies lately? No, dear. But you let me know when you want some, and I'll whip up half a dozen. You've lost weight. Are you caught in a new man? Oh, Gabriel, don't be silly. You know there'll never be anyone but your granddad for me. Your hair looks very pretty today, Gran. Well, oh my, thank you, dear. So does... Oh, uh, you always had such nice, thick hair, Gabriel. You know, I always tell people that my Gran is the prettiest grand old belle in the city. Oh, dear. You shouldn't talk so. You know, you get prettier ever. Have you baked? No. Underwala portraits of Gran and Grams. Gabriel's inherited some good-looking jeans. The wood in the bin is mostly pictures of Gabriel. Gran. Gab Grandmother. Not That doesn't seem to work that way. I'm going to go up to the attic, Gran. Be careful of the dust. Grandma's attic is a storehouse of forgotten treasures and useless junk. Gabriel has seen these ornaments every year at Christmas for as long as he can remember. That must have been the year Granddaddy caught Santa on the roof. It's an old, dusty bicycle tire. There's a sketchbook on the chair that Gabriel vaguely remembers as his father's. That box of knick-knacks has been up there for at least five years. An elaborate mechanical clock, probably of German origin, 
is among the discarded treasures of the attic. It doesn't seem to be running at the moment. The old vel... I think I'll take Daddy's sketchbook with me. Gabriel looks fondly at his father's sketchbook. Images haunt the pages of Philip Knight's sketchbook. The way they must have haunted his mind. The, ima the images touch a deep card in Gabriel. So familiar are they that he finds it hard to believe they aren't from his own subconscious. Images haunt the... Image the... A ring of six symbols surround the face of the clock. A sword, a sun, an angel, a noose, an eclipse, and a dragon. There's an interesting design in the base of the clock. A key winds the clock's mechanism. Nothing happens. The hands do not appear. It's the minute hand. It's the, the face of the clock is hand painted. The face. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Granddaddy, you old fox. The photo, probably at least 50 years old, shows two young men standing with an older man outside the castle. I wonder who they are. Why do that to the photo? Gabriel doesn't want to take the clock. The key... I think I'll leave that up here. The old photographs show Gabriel's grandfather with two other men that Gabriel has not identified. The letter is addressed to Heinz Ritter, whoever that is. The it was sent from a place called Schloss Ritter in Rittersburg, West Germany. The letter is addressed to mein Sohn Heinz and signed Wilhelm Ritter. One of the reoccurring words strewn throughout the letter is the word Schattenjäger. The only thing that Gabriel can decipher about the letter is a sense of urgency in the handwriting and in the heavy use of quill tip bold strokes and underlining. A skylight lets welcome sunlight into the attic. Grandma's attic is... That's it. Take a load off, hon. What's new, Gran? Can we talk, Gran? Of course. Do you know anyone named Heinz Ritter? Heinz Ritter? Oh, Gabriel, where did you hear that name? I found a letter in Granddaddy's clock. I promised I'd never tell you or your father, but I 
I suppose it doesn't matter now. Tell me, Gran. Your granddad's name was Heinz Ritter before he came to America. He changed it to Harrison Knight legally when he arrived. Why did Granddad change his name? I don't know. I tried to ask him about his family, his life before America, but he didn't want to talk about it. He never even told me about his name change. I found out one day when I saw his passport in a drawer. Since he obviously found it painful, I never questioned him about it. But I'm sure it wasn't trouble with the law. Your granddad was the best man I ever knew. Didn't granddad ever say anything about his past or his family? Only that his family was crazy and that he never wanted to see them again. He believed in some family curse thought that he could spare Philip and Philip's children from what he called old nightmares. Whatever Harrison wanted to spare you, though, it cost him plenty. He never did sleep well, and he would often get a faraway guilty look in his eyes. He was wrestling with something he thought he should be doing, some place he thought he ought to be. I don't know how he could think that he should be anywhere but with me and our child. It's a terrible way to live. Do you know anything else about Heinz Ritter? I've told you all I know about your granddad's past. Can we talk? Of course. Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? 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 How are you, Gabriel? I haven't heard that word in years. My goodness, you've given me a chill. Your granddad used to say that sometimes in his sleep. Really? Do you know what it means? No, I'm afraid not. I asked him about it once. I don't think he answered me. Odd. Hmm. Thanks, Gran. Have you ever heard of... I don't... Well, Gran, I better get going. All right, dear. Gabriel is standing in the lobby of his friend Mosley's precinct. It smells like a cross between a hospital and brewery. The official seal of the New Orleans Police Department. A uniformed... She's not bad. The desk sergeant looked like a poster boy for heart disease. In other words, a typical product of good southern cooking. No one goes back there until I say so, mister. Sorry. There's a temperature gauge on the wall near Mosley's office. There's a photocopy machine. Hey, nice precinct. Think so? That's peachy. That means more to me than you could know. Hey, it's a beignet guy. Great, I'm starved. Stay put, you. Hey, grab me three, would ya? Sure.
Thanks. Gabriel Ka Kinda quiet in here today. Yeah, summer's like that. It's too muggy to mug. Too hot to heft. How clever. It's a gift. So, what's new around the old police station? Well, we're now allowed to shoot chatty pedestrians on sight. That sounds convenient. I like it. So, anything interesting happening around? Look, I got a job to do. Chat with someone else, huh? Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's out at a crime scene. Sorry. Where is the crime scene? Is it related to the voodoo murders? Crime scene information is police confidential. We don't need any more looky-loos than are probably already there. Come on, you can tell me where the crime scene is. Look, I know the papers got everybody stirred up about these killings, but that don't make it public information. Back off. So this is a new voodoo murder then? Hey, I didn't say that. You'll read all about it in the papers tomorrow, I'm sure. Please tell me where the crime scene is. Look, buddy, you keep it up, and there'll be a crime scene right here. Please look. About Detective Mosley. I told you he's not here. About the I told I was supposed to pick up some photos from Detective Mosley at the front desk. Is that right? And who are you? My name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Yeah. I got something for you, all right. As soon as you're done talking, I'll give it to you. Tell me about yourself. Who, me? I'm the Death Sergeant Frick. Why? Frick? That's right. You got a problem with that? Not at all. Tell me about you. You see that front door? Yeah? Well, I watch people come in. See this book? Yeah? Well, I write people's names in it, see? People that bother me. Want me to put your name in this book? Uh, I think not. That's what I thought. Tell me I hate people who are... What can you tell me about voodoo? Me? Nothing. I'm a Catholic boy. What can I told you, I ain't got... What do you know about the voodoo murders? I'm not allowed to give out information on police cases. Are you sure you can't give me the scoop on the voodoo murders case? Hey, buddy. Do I look like the kind of low life that'd betray my sacred oath to this department? I don't know. What would that kind of low life look like? Like hamburger meat if I got a hold of him. Kinda like what you're gonna look like in about five seconds. Okay, okay, sorry I asked. You're really pressing your luck, pal. What can you tell me about New Orleans? I'll tell you, I'm glad as hell it's not Mardi Gras. If it weren't for that one month a year, being a cop in New Orleans would be a real pleasure. As it is, I'd rather stick behind this desk. What can you tell me? Best food in the world. You can get it right here in New Orleans. Muffalata sandwiches. Mmm. Mmm. Beignets, good Cajun coffee. Yep. Man can die happy in this city. What can you tell me? Well, 
I love this city good as anybody, but I already gave you my opinion. Why don't you check out the Travel Bureau? Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? Can't say that I have, but it sounds dirty. Here's that envelope for you, Gabriel Knight. Thanks. The envelope from... The envelope has Gabriel's name written on it. Miss Bell. Gabriel opens the manila envelope and finds two photographs. One of the photos from Mosley is an official voodoo murders crime scene shot. A graphic close-up of a victim. Those two objects, those two the photograph of Mosley was apparently taken upon his graduation from the police academy. He, he had hair then. St. Louis Cathedral. The original church on this site was built in 1724 and was named for Louis IX of France. That church burnt in the Great Fire of 1788. The present church dates from 1851. Gabriel is standing on the balcony of a building across the street from the Presbytery. This building was begun by the Spaniards in 1795 after a fire in Jackson Square. It was intended to Pont Alba buildings are historical landmarks built in 1849 and 18. Nice plant. Nice plant. Four pairs of binoculars are re. A police officer is either off-duty or patrolling the park, or both. Good day, officer. Yeah, to you too. Keep moving. Ambulance Good day, officer. Yeah. There's no one to talk. The band is too into their music to talk to Gabriel. The other park visitors are enjoying their leisure and aren't interested in talking to Gabriel. Anyone seen Joe? A blues band entertains on the lawn. Now that's music. Iron lampposts are charm. The band doesn't work. The band obviously likes this spot. The band what am I, a groupie? The band isn't likely to want to follow Gabriel. That jazz band is pretty good. <laughs> of course, most jazz band in New Orleans are.
a Cajun band, inventive as always with it. Why, you nasty thing, you! I'll call the police, I will! Since Gabriel can't read lips, he's disinclined to start a conversation. The Cajun band is a little busy. That in you white faced geek, you want to eat my fist? Stop following me. Stop. In terror. Wasn't that mime somewhere else? A m hey, stop picking on me. I'll tell my dad. Well, I never! Leave me alone, you! You... you man! Hey, cut that out. I told you to stop that. All right, mister. You want some of this? Gabriel like... Gabriel picks up the headset and listens. Ambulance 91, have you located the crime scene? They've radioed for you three times. Damn! Did you say it was north of the Lake Retreat Country Club? South. Lakeside Drive north of Piedmont Pier, south of the Country Club. Man, I don't know if it's the clouds out here today or what. Good thing this guy's already dead. Everyone's having trouble. Must have been hallucinogens in the coffee this morning. It's just so misty out here or something. I... Hey, I see a squad car. Got it, Molly. Thank God. Have a good one, 91. Interesting. Stupid mime. Hey, you! Get away from that bike! Sorry. Good day. Yeah. The crime scene team is still at the site. 
Gabriel parks a bit out of the way and walks over to avoid adding to the general confusion. Hey, mostly. Huh? <sighs> Night, you wiener. I told you not to call me that. Feeling jumpy? Who, me? Don't be stupid. How'd you find me? Oh, I was just driving by. Mm-hmm. Well, for the book. But don't tell anyone I let you see this, huh? It's another one, as you can see. Same M.O. and no frickin' clues. We're still waiting on an ID for the body. That's disgusting. Isn't this a rather, uh, public area for this kind of thing? Yeah, they're frickin' ghosts, these guys. Lakeshore Drive isn't exactly the 10 Expressway, but it is open to the public. No reports and nothing. Now, who the hell is that? Hey, Miss Getty. What's going on, officer? Detective Mosley, ma'am. We've got a little problem here, but nothing for you to be concerned about, Miss Getty. I see. Thank you, Detective. And good day, gentlemen. Whoa, I'm in love. Forget it. That's Molly again. She's about as far out of your reach as the moon. Probably on her way to meet some guy with a yacht right now. Near here? The lake's a popular place for country clubs. If she's out here a lot, maybe she saw something or heard something. Man, nobody ever sees or hears nothing. I told you. Besides, you just don't go around bothering people like her. We've about wrapped it up, sir. It's another clean sweep. Yeah, let's get the meat wagon moving, then. Do you want to leave an officer here, sir? Nah. Just leave the tape up for a few days. Yes, sir. If you'll excuse us, sir, we'll take him away. Stick around and take notes for the book if you want. Watch out for the muck in the water moccasins, though. I'll be back at the station. Stop by if you want to go over the case. Thanks. Lake Pontchartrain is impressive. It measures 24 miles across and stretches as far as the eye can see. But you wouldn't want to swim in it. The trees on the banks of the lake are mostly oak and elm. Police tape marks off the crime scene. Gabriel is on the sand and Clay Shaw of the site is now the the banks of Lake Pontchartrain are the bank. Gabriel was just thinking that he could really use a lake. Hmm, is that clay? Yuck. Gabriel is carrying a lump of clay from the banks of Lake Pontchartrain. There seems to be a pattern to the lines in the sand, but if there is a pattern, it's smeared. 
there's only one small area that's clearly defined. Gabriel is on the sand and clay shore of Lake Pontchartrain. The out, out damn the spot. Will these pristine banks ne'er be cleaned again? Hmm, let me try to get this down. Gabriel does not particularly want to mess with the bloody sun. Gabriel doesn't want to sketch that. It's very large grass. Gib it's very... It's extremely big, bloody sand. The la There's not... It's very large grass. There are marks in the grass as though some heavy wire object had been set there. With magnification, the marks in the grass are clearer. The marks are actually deep indentations. Something small and iridescent is barely visible among the indentations. It looks like a scale of some sort. Gabriel carefully uses the tweezers to take the small iridescent scale. I think it's a snake scale, but it beats the hell out of me what kind. Gabriel is carrying a scale he found near the crime. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's in his office. Go on back. Do you know anything about snakes? What does this look like? A zoo? Never mind, don't answer that. No, I, I don't know nothing about no snakes. Excuse me, officer. Yes? So, what's it like being a policewoman? The glamour never ceases. Excuse me? Yes? You know, that uniform looks great on you. Uh-huh. Is that a compliment, or are you asking to borrow my dress? It's a compliment. Well, you just never know around here. Thanks, but I'm married. Excuse me? Yes? Could you get me some coffee? Are you speaking to me? Why, yes. Wow. Deja leave it to Beaver. I'm the police photographer, sir. You might be able to find someone around here dumb enough to get coffee for you. But guess what? It won't be me. Oh, thanks, anyway. It's an inbox. An officer's desk is just behind the front counter. She's not bad. There's a photocopy machine in the office area. There's a temperature gauge on the wall near Mosley's office. It's in a locked cage. The control box is in a locked cage.
Muscly, my man. Yeah, yeah, what is it, you wanker? Unfo so, how's it hanging, bud? Lousy. I hate crime scenes. People are sick fucks, you know that night? I'm starting to get that impression. You been feeling okay lately? You look like hell. Me? Ah, uh, you know, I can't sleep at night what with thinking about the case and thinking about Annie. I can relate. Played any b-ball lately? Does it look like it? I'm so out of shape I'd probably have a coronary just looking at a ball. I'm out of it too. We should play sometime. Get back into shape. Man, I'd love to, Knight. I'll let you know if things ever settle down. Who's that? Franks. What a babe, huh? Mosley was one of those beefy guys in his youth. Now he's getting lumpy. The badge in his front coat pocket is set off particularly well by the gold polyester of his jacket. Mosley's desk has more groin on it than on his head. Mosley's bookcase holds old magazines and binders, art prints of the mall variety. Logs of unsolved cases. Mosley's office look. Police department memos. A microwave. Art. Mosley's. Mosley. Anything else new? Just work. Sorry I don't have more time to. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. Have you ever called a hair club for men? I'd rather have no hair than your hair, Knight. So how'd you ever find anything in this office? It looks like ground zero. Hey, I get my job done. I'm a detective, not Betty Cracker. Trying for a real estate job with that coat? No. Are you trying out for a janitorial job with that hair? Are those new shoes? What are those, hush puppies? <laughs> kind of a mud brown suede kind of a thing? Hey, I'm on my feet all day, all right? Is that okay with you? Mostly. I'm being perfectly sincere. Yeah, you and my grandmother, right. You know, you have a unique way of wearing clothes that's, well, the way they hang, kind of pleading over that stomach of yours, drooping off of your butt. We can't all have the body of a 12-year-old like you, Knight. You know, if you started carrying a lollipop around, you might get more respect as a detective. Go to hell. Have you ever called a... I'd... I got those photographs you left for me. Really? Great. What'd you think? Astonishingly lifelike. Yeah, that's what I thought. Got any more ideas for photos for the book? Nope. What's the status on the voodoo murders case? It's going. Can't seem to make any progress, though. Sluggish damn case. It's weird. What's the status on the... You're as filled in as... Have you ever heard of a Shutton Jaeger? No. Ha! Is that anything like a Chuck Jaeger? I don't think there's any relation. Do you know anything about the patterns around the bodies? Yeah, weird, huh? All seven victims had those little marks around. We got all the marks on file, but we haven't figured out what, if anything, they mean. Can I see the other six patterns? Uh, sure. 
People like that kind of stuff, don't they? Might make the book seem more mysterious. Now go talk to Officer Franks. Tell her I said you could see the fire. The suit. Excuse me, officer. Yes. Can you get a file for me? What file would that be? The voodoo murders file. Detective Mosley said I could see it. Really? Well, if he said so. There it is. You can look at it all you want. But don't leave this area with it, okay? And no photocopies either, I'm afraid. Of course. I understand completely. The police file contains partial patterns from the first six voodoo murders. I told you, you can't photocopy official police files. Right. Sorry. I forgot. Don't leave the room with that file, please. I'm done. Yeah, thanks. You're the right. How about getting me some coffee? Coffee? You want coffee? Should that surprise you? Nah, you've always been a caffeine addict. It's just that what we got here hardly qualifies. So, I'm desperate. It's your stomach. I'll get you some when we're done talking. That long? <laughs> All right, I'll go now. Don't touch anything while I'm gone. Mosley's dead. Gabriel would not. There is dead. Gabe. Gabe. Here, drink it. Thanks. Gabriel can that Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. I got those photographs you left for me. So you say a cop author photo might be nice. You and me? Together? Why not? Of course you'll have to try to tone down your masculinity. Well, okay. Now I'll call the police photographer. Franks, come here a minute, would you? Bring your camera. What did you need, Detective Mosley? We need a picture, please. And make it a good one, huh, sweetheart? Sure, sweetheart. Say, chintzy. Was there anything else, Knight? How about one of me and Officer Franks? Gee, I don't know. Franks? Uh, um... <laughs> Just kidding, Franks. You want to get me fired for sexual harassment, Knight? 
Well. Yeah, ha, ha. Now, is there anything else, or can I let this lady go back to her desk? Hold on a sec while I go check my hair. Good God, Knight. Make it fast. There's nothing in the copy of... Let me see that file again. Just want to check this machine here. Gabriel has a photocopy of the official police file containing the partial patterns from the voodoo murder. Would you just get in here? Hurry up, would you? Okay, ready. Thanks, hon. Let me know when you got it developed. Uh, <laughs> the photos, that is. Yeah, sure. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. What can you tell me about? Voodoo. There's voodoo that goes on in this city, sure. I looked into it a bit at the beginning of this case. But the voodoo stuff found at the crime scenes is all faked. It doesn't have anything to do with the real stuff. I know, I asked some experts. It's intimidation tactics, that's all. What can you tell me? I told you. What do you know about the voodoo murder? Lots. Can you be more specific? Do you know anything about the killers? At least 20 people attend the killings. We know this from the variety of footprints found at the scenes. Footprints? Aren't those as good as fingerprints? Can be. But we'd have to have a suspect in custody first, and the suspect would have to match one of the few distinct prints we have. Most of the footprints are smudged, trodden over, unreadable. These guys are so casual in their expertise, it's maddening. Like they know we'll never find them. How many murders have there been so far? Seven murders have so far been linked to the Voodoo Murders case. Now, the first murder occurred about eight weeks ago. The M.O. was the same in each murder. Lake Ponchar Train was the seventh. Any witnesses? Nope. There's never been a single witness. No one's even heard a disturbance. It's damned weird. Like they just don't want people to see, and so nobody sees nothing. Describe the crime scenes. Well, there's the corpse itself, minus the heart. Around where the body was killed, we find marks and flour and blood. There are traces of wax from candles, red and black. Ordinary wax candles, so the lab reports. Also blood and feathers of chickens. Also goat's blood. And plenty of the victim's own, of course. What kind of evidence have you found? No fingerprints, a few bare footprints. Found a few fibers, but not many. The weirdest one was leopard fur. Leopard fur? What's the coroner say? The victim's heart is always ripped out of the chest and missing. We haven't located a single one of them. Lovely. Any idea what they do with them? Don't even want to know. 
Also, the coroner says some of the victims had heart attacks before the incision, literally scared to death. The knife wounds are consistent with a long, narrow, wavy-edged knife, probably a ritualistic dagger. Know anything about the victims? The victims are all out-of-towners. We still don't know why. Oh, nothing, never mind. Sure, no problem. What can you tell me about New Orleans? You and me grew up together, you tell me. It's a pretty nice place, even seeing the stuff I see. You know. The quarter's getting a bit too wild, though. Getting hard to control. Not quite what it was when you and me used to hang here, but... Hell, I've never known anything else. What can you... Ah, uh, I'm too sentimental to say anything else about it. Do you know anything about snakes? The only thing I know about snakes is I don't like them. Have you ever heard of a... Well, not since... Tell me about yourself. For the book? Sure, why not? Okay, what do you want to know? How'd you like working on the police force? Are you kidding? You know I love being a cop. In New Orleans, it's the best place in the world to be one. What are your plans for the future? Well, you know, I don't like to count my chickens before they're hatched, but... I don't see why I can't be the chief of police in New Orleans someday. I already know the mayor, and my record is one of the best in the department. I'm sure it's just a matter of moments, mostly. Yeah, yeah, you'll see. Got any hobbies? Yeah, making your life miserable. I'm serious. Don't you shoot or chew or something like that? No, I'm a freaking ballet dancer. Jeez. Yeah, I was number one at the Louisiana State Fair Marksman Contest. I play trumpet, too. You know, put your lips together and blow. How's your home life? Oh, real funny, Knight. Why don't you just bring in some freaking salt? Well, you know Annie left me. My home life is shit. Right. Sorry about that. Just tell me anything at all. Remember how we used to play Monkey in the Middle? <laughs> we used to piss off our senior year teacher. What was her name? Ms. McKelly? You'd act like you were gonna toss her an eraser or something. Then you'd throw it to me over her head. And we used to do it at your grand's, too. Like with the remote when she wanted to watch her soaps. Yep, and it was a great way to pick up women in the library, huh? Oh, those were the days. Just... You know, my doctor told me I've got a little family of ulcers starting. I wish this case would end so I'd get some rest for a change. My back hurts. For the book, I wanted to be an astronaut when I was young. Or a fireman. Fascinating. I'm 6'2". You are not. Oh, come on. I'm close enough. Just write me up that way. Oh, God. You know, I kind of like women with dark hair. Yeah, I know. It's a regular thing with you. Now that grace. You're on your own with that one, pal. I don't even want to know. Just remember how we used to eat it and we yeah. Oh, nothing. No. It's have you ever called the hair club for men? I'd rather have no hair than your hair. The suit that I'll let you get back to it. Later, Knight. Hey, nice precinct.
Hi. Uh -huh. Hi there. Is this your store? This is a Dixieland drug store and I own it, me. Name's Walker, Willie Walker. So, this is a voodoo store, huh? Voodoo? No, man, this is a curio shop. The things you see here are from local folklore. None of it's real, I tell you for sure. What about these magic oils and powders you're selling? Aren't they a part of voodoo? Read the label, man. We make no claim. Sold as curio only. It means what it says, no? These are novelties, not voodoo. Talking to that would be unenlightening. I'm a businessman too. I own a bookstore here in the French Quarter. I don't really care, me. I got a store to run. Gabriel Di So, do you get many tourists in here? We oui, all the time. They want to buy a bottle of money drawn oil or a wanga bag to take home with them. How's business? About like always. So, do you get Small bags made of felt and flannel hang from the ceiling. Those are gree gree. They're full of magic. No guarantees though, you know. Voodoo and hoodoo. The craft as revealed by traditional practitioners by Jim Haskins. Available at Dixieland Drugstore and other fine stores. The Dix... The sign say, Special Saint Jean Eve, Lanyape, Free Bottle of Lover Come Back to Me Oil, or Master Gambling Oil, with every purchase over fifty dollars. Lanyape. My French is lousy, but everyone in New Orleans knows what that means. A little something extra. Root bags. Curio boxes and magic candles, sold as curios only. We cannot guarantee results. Herbal oils for love, luck, power, and success. In this case are super concentrated fixing oils and packages of pins. A variety of cloth dolls are arranged above the shelf, each impaled with a single silver pin. The entire shelf is stocked with containers of High John the Conqueror root powder. The the glass jars contain a number of things Gabriel can't identify. And wouldn't want to. The sign says potion ingredients. These jars must be for do-it-yourselfers. The sign says power items. The shelf hole con- The mask appears to be made from a real crocodile head. The Dixieland, the Would you mind taking a look at this photograph? Cabri Saint Cour. Cabri Saint Cour. What does that mean? Nothing. I didn't say anything like that. You heard me wrong, man. Can you tell me anything about these murders? Does any of this voodoo stuff around the body look familiar to you? Don't you come in here asking me about this stuff, yeah? 20 years I run a respectable curio shop in the French Quarter. That don't mean I know about dead bodies and all this... this oh, forget it, man! Look at the voodoo paraphernalia around the body in the photograph. Are you sure you can't tell me anything about it? No, I don't know anything about it. Nothing. Look at the...
Does this mean anything to you? I don't know anything about that at all. Does this mean anything? I don't know. Mind if I ask you a few questions? Ask what you want. What did you mean when you said Cabri sans corps? I didn't say that. You did. I heard you say it. You heard wrong, monsieur. I said no such thing. What's the significance of St. John's Eve? It's the biggest night of the year in Voodoo. What goes on exactly? Uh, I couldn't say. Can you tell me what you know about Voodoo? This is a novelty shop, monsieur. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Monsieur, that has nothing to do with my shop. What can you tell me about New Orleans? I've lived here all my life, me. Do you know anything about snakes? What kind of snakes? Um, the kind they use in voodoo? Pythons and boas. So I've heard. Really? Do you have one? Are you crazy? What would I want with a python? What did you- I didn't say that. You did. I heard- You- Tell me about yourself. My name's Willie Walker. I own the place. I knew you'd miss me, so I came back. The excitement of seeing you is killing me. There's no one in... So, what's new, Grace? Your use of mathematics, for one thing. These books are unbelievable. What can I say? The strap marks on your back. Hey kids! Bruno! How nice! Gee, a customer. Of yours? Hardly. How's the flower business? Well, better than the used book business, I see. Rare books. That explains why I so rarely see anyone in here. Are you going to sell me that wonderful painting of yours today? How much would you give me for it, Bruno? Gabriel, don't you dare sell your father's painting. Well, I guess I don't need the money that badly. From the looks of this shop, I'm sure you will, my boy. And soon. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? St. John's Eve? Mm, never heard of it. It must be a local custom. New Orleans love any excuse to celebrate. Do you know what Cabri Saint Gaur means? Hmm. No. Sounds French, though. Do you have messages for me? Nope. Could you do some research for me? 
Sure. What? Could you see what you can find out about a woman named Malia Getty? Hmm. The name Getty sounds familiar. What's your interest in her? Oh, just, you know, stuff about the voodoo murders. If you could get an address... Mm-hmm. They're murders. Right. I'll see what I can find out. Anything else? I can't think of anything. Okay. Well... <sighs> it's about closing time. So it is. Good night, Gracie. Good night, Gabriel. And uh, try not to dream, okay?